People think video is about looking good. And it's the biggest mistake you can make. Perfect time for us to talk about making videos. A quick story example. I was doing or I do all the promotion for the national or, or excuse me, the um, Modern Real Estate Summit and the Modern Mortgage Summit. During COVID, these two events were put together to be online events and somebody could go to live conferences. And they're the most attended events in the industry is over 10,000 people, all the speakers in the industry and everybody submitted videos and they would submit their videos and then they would get all edited and put into formats and made really professional. And I would do the promotion for the events and promote all these videos. And one day they sent me a cell phone video and said, this one came in and we didn't have time. Somebody's out sick, whatever. Bottom line, this one couldn't be edited. It was just a cell phone video. And the writers, they didn't have anything written for it. So I took this video and it was Shayla Gifford, by the way, this cell phone video. And I watched it as, you know, minute long. And I grabbed what I thought was the most compelling sentence in there. And it's, it's, it's never the over overproduced stuff. It's not the, you know, wow, headliney things. A line she said in there was for 18 years, I hated my life as a loan officer. But for the last 10, it's made all my dreams come true. So that's the excerpt that I pulled out and made the headline or the caption for the, the video. And I left it unedited. After I put it in there, even though it started with her smiling and getting ready to do her video, I went into the thumbnail section on Facebook and, and said, choose thumbnail manually and picked a thumbnail where she was mid-sentence, conveyed action, outproduced. And we're talking dozens and dozens and dozens of videos from, from everybody. I mean, the top people in the country, Ryan Serhant was there, Jeremy Forcier, great videos, Renee Rodriguez, but Shayla's was the best perform because it looked like a social media post, because it looked authentic, because people could relate to that little comment. What really draws people in? People think video is about looking good, and it's the biggest mistake you can make. It's good to have professional videos to convey your professionalism. But I highly recommend that you have regular videos in between because you want people to like you. The video has to be about them. Remember, 80% of what you produce is for the people that will be consuming that content. So when you're producing videos, don't be afraid of using the cell phone. Woodwitch, The Awakening, a Hollywood movie, forget when it's being released, shot entirely on Androids. The last... Bentley commercial. They paid like $280,000 for this commercial shot entirely on iPhones. Uh, uh, there are little rigs that you can put your phones in and things to hold your phones, but there is no reason for anybody to buy a camera. It's just cell phones are the equivalent of a DSLR from just five years ago. There's nothing you can't do with your cell phone. And look, I'm in somebody's studio today. And yes, we have lights and green screens and everything else. That's wonderful. You don't need it. Traveling on the road, have my backpack with me in my backpack, which goes with me everywhere. I always have this. This is my video studio. That's somebody else's video studio. I guarantee you, I'll shoot the videos up there. They'll have professional editors do them. They will be for somebody's website or something, and that's fine. You want it to look professional. But if I were to put them up as a social post, they would probably not do as well as if I shot them with my own studio. And this is my studio. And now I can set it on the desk in front of me or the conference table and then set it right at eye level. So I'm looking at it. And then it has what I love, my favorite tool, because it eliminates all editing. Whoops, there we go. Because it has a little removable Bluetooth. This is all I need. A and it kills me because I do. I love to edit video. I like to make professional videos. I like to do that stuff. But when it comes time to put them up and see which ones 
get watched longer, see which ones get more leads, see which ones have lower cost per through play. The plain ones almost always win. And, and, and again, that's not telling you you shouldn't have professional videos. Authenticity, it's more about the content. When is it time to edit a video? Well, one of my favorite videos, as you guys know, are curation videos where I'm curating somebody else's content. When I find another video that is awesome, that's viral, that explains something, that's whatever, I can share that video, but that's no good because I'm sending traffic over to somebody else. If I want to put that video on my Facebook page, on my website, whatever, I have to alter it so that I'm staying compliant. I have to make a new video out of it. So I got to add some editorial commentary, demonstration, example, whatever. So I'll record a quick little intro. When you find a good article, when you find a good video about, when you find a news story about, give your quick little five or 10 second commentary, but now I got to stitch those two videos together. If you're going to do any video editing, these are the basic ways that we do it over and over and over and over. My number one, I make a video and I just trim off the in and the out point. That's all you really got to be able to do. You can do it right on your phone. You can do it in a hundred apps or you can, and I just recommend you find somebody that can do it for you. Just find somebody you can send your videos to, and not professional video editors. I just need you to do these things. I need you to be able to trim in and out points. I need you to be able to, to stitch videos together because I want my intro and then I want that news story, YouTube video, whatever. I want you to be able to add graphics. Oh yeah, I want this picture there. And uh, maybe if I can add graphics, I could also have things like a watermark. This is not big video editing. This is stuff you can do in well over a hundred apps you can go get for free in your app store. Do it in iMovie, Windows movie, whatever. It, it's anybody can do it, but your time's too valuable. I highly recommend you find somebody else, but this is how you wanna put your videos together. But if I want a little brandy, I want an intro stinger, dun, 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 dun. Bill, whatever. Never, ever, ever open with an intro stinger. It's one of the most common mistakes you'll see. It makes people scroll by faster than anything else. There's nothing in an intro stinger for them. A logo reveal is another name. So my format here, as you can see, it's teaser, stinger, video. If I shoot a video with somebody, and I say, hey, we're here at, blah, 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 you know, uh, uh, Dino's Pizza. And today I'm talking to Dino and blah, 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 blah. I'm Dino, what do you got for me? And I'm going through, I'm doing the whole video and we shoot it. Great, I got my video and I can put it up. And that's fine. But no, 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 I want my logo uh, and maybe a watermark on there. Uh, uh, you know, I want my little logo down in the corner and I want my intro stinger that says, you know, uh, 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 Scottsdale Life or, or, Prune Living or Homes and Life, uh, uh, McDowell Mountain I'm in Scottsdale. Uh, uh, so all my local places. Well, I want that little reveal there because I want this to look like a channel, like a show or whatever. But you don't open with the stinger. And you're going to see this happen over and over and over. And you're going to realize that, yeah, it loses you. You lose a, a interest. You always open with a reason to watch your video. That's the only purpose of the first three seconds is to make them stick around. You're not trying to get your name across. You're not trying to do anything else. Just like the only purpose for the first sentence in your post is to get them to read the second sentence. That's the only purpose. Now, if you want to take it up a step, if you want to take it up a step, now you're, you're great. I got my teaser. No matter what, I open with a teaser. No matter what, I got to have a hook. I like the quick little intro sting. Do not, everybody wants to make them long and have music and lots of pictures and da, 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 like it's some kind of TV show. Yes, yeah, sorry, you're never gonna get them watch it. One and a half seconds, max. Don't use music, use a swoosh sound. Just quick, dirty, boom, done, logo. And now title, 
And the title can be over the top of the video, or it can be a title transition screen. But a title is good because it does help suck them in, and you build that into the end of the stinger. Then you got your main video, and then you can have an outro. And a lot of times you need an outro, which an outro instead of an intro is it, it can be like your stinger, but usually it's just a fixed slide. Most people make them like as a PowerPoint slide or whatever. I need my call to action. I need my contact information. I need my licensing information, but that's your ad. Just think of like a one little page ad that says, you know, here for all your real estate needs, blah, 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 Bill Hillstead, whatever, and MLS ID. It makes the compliance people happy. People almost never make it to the outro, but hey, it's there. I got it. My disclosures are in my video. And your outro only needs to be a slide. And then the final, the ultimate video, if you're having people make videos, this is how you make them. You shoot clips that are going to be stitched together. If I'm doing the video with the pizza guy and I don't want talking head on the screen for more than... Uh, um, 30 seconds max, and it's like a two minute interview that I did with Dino at Dino's Pizza. Well, I might try to cut a little bit out of it. So now I got a couple clips that have to be stitched together, but you know, if I'm not in the same pose, it won't look right if they just cut. Or I might have shot one with them in the dining area where I'm talking about blah, 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 and the vibe and the atmosphere. Another one back in the kitchen, and the guy's throwing the pizza dough in the air. The best videos usually entail several shorter clips but I don't want that weird clip. So I'll grab a B-roll clip. And a B-roll clip, just so you know, B-roll is a video clip that you drop over the top of your video, usually to hide a transition or something in the background, but also to make it more interesting. It's your graphics, it's your whatever. So I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna do a just very slow pan across the room. And that's a B-roll clip. Or I'm going to go outside, I'm going to take a picture of the front of the building. And then if you're taking a picture, always make it as wide as you possibly can because you're going to take that picture, your video editor, that you ask them to do this, it's going to take that picture, this is a picture, and this is called the Ken Burns effect. They're going to put a pan or a zoom on it. If you start super wide angle, you don't need videos for B-roll because it's really hard to get good B-roll clips. Just take wide angle photos. When I'm talking about the Manhattan Beach Pier, that's where they're gonna drop this picture of the pier over the top of the video to hide that intersection and make it more interesting. But I always try to give my editor at least one B-roll image or video clip that they can use to cover up transitions or to enhance my video to make it more interesting. You have to find that person who's gonna be your editor. Even if you are able to edit, find somebody else. Your time is worth more. Or there are quite a few apps available to make them on your phone if you're just the kind of person who likes to DIY everything. It's just super simple. Um, but for the most part, I just want B-roll. Open with a teaser, B-roll in between my clips to cover up my transition and make my video more interesting. A logo as a watermark down in the corner is a great branding thing. Having the same colors that you use over and over and over, that's a great branding technique for your videos. But guys, that's really it. If you want, here's a tip to make some really cool videos. If you go and buy a selfie pole gimbal on Amazon. It looks like I might've grabbed one for a GoPro instead of a cell phone, but Bayou Tech makes them for both. I use them all the time. A gimbal, you stick your phone in it and it makes it, you know, it's the thing where you can jog and it'll still give you a perfectly steady video. Well, the problem with a regular gimbal is it's for filming other people. What if you want to film yourself? Cause you're going to be walking through a house and going, oh, and look at this lovely whatever. So I, I like the gimbal that holds my phone that has the extendable pole so I can keep my arm down so it's not out like that. And now I can walk, and I gotta tell you, just walking down a sidewalk, 
walking through a parking lot, walking up to a building, any of those add a lot more interest to the video than just sitting there. Talking head, you need anything to make it more dynamic. Stuff going on in the background, people in the background. And by the way, if you don't want to go spend money on a gimbal, I noticed this on this because I've been teaching this stuff for many, many years. I used to, before gimbals were readily, readily available, this is how we used to do virtual tours on houses. And I won't play this video. Uh, 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 well, yeah, there you go. You can see I have the movement because it's not that stabilized, but I'm walking around talking to you and giving you a tour of an office. All you do is you put your phone on a selfie pole. All selfie poles have quarter 20 threads or tripod mounts. If you mount a selfie pole to a tripod, anything that's a weight, that's what how cameras used to be stabilized before they had gyroscopes. But if you put a tripod on a selfie pole, now I could walk and I don't have to, again, I don't want to be holding my hand out, but I could just walk with my arms at my side. Selfie pole's out there filming me like it's my camera crew. And I'm, I'm just walking through the office uh, uh, explaining. And yeah, my office had a lot of toys. Um, and that's it. And I'm walking, talking to you. I'm walking away from you. I'm doing everything. And all I had was a $10 selfie pole and my $20 tripod. And that's it. Understand how you're producing them. All you got to do is make sure that one, don't be too professional, be authentic. Always make eye contact with the camera. Never, ever. That's why I never want people behind the camera because we tend to talk to them and lock on their eyes. And if I'm talking like this and not looking at you, yeah, it makes the video a fraction as effective. Always obsessed with looking straight at the lens. Don't be stiff. Nobody wants to watch stiff videos. All your professionalism stuff eh, out. That's That's really all there is to it. Your sound has to be good, but truthfully, the microphones on modern cell phones are spectacular, up to about five feet away from the phone. The, the fall off curve on sound is exponential. So as you get further away, that's when they get bad. But even if I'm doing an, uh, uh, an intro, or, or excuse me, an interview video, I'm not gonna have the camera more than about five feet away from us. If you are gonna have a situation where there is too much extraneous noise, or for some reason, uh, you're not gonna be close enough to the phone and you do wanna have a better microphone, highly recommend one of two things. Rode and Movo both make cell phone shotgun mics that will mount right onto your cell phone. A shotgun is a long skinny mic, that, but it's just a little one, but it only picks up what's right in front of it. But the best is go get a Movo lavalier, cell phone lavalier interview set. It's a, a lavalier always going to have great sound. The, the lavalier interview set just has a Y and two lavaliers with plenty of cable to be able to each got them clipped on you. Will, and they've got a little windsock on them. You will always get spectacular sound out of a lavalier if you're doing a lot of interviews. But I'm telling you, if there's not a bunch of extraneous noise, it's and you're not going to be more than five feet from your phone. Don't worry about it. Phone is fine. Same thing with the light. You don't really need the fill-in lights. The, the, the technology and the software is so good, it's just not necessary unless you have bad lighting. Far more important, forget all this how to shoot video stuff. Far more important, and I'll wrap it up. Far more important to think about what's in my video. Do I give them something they want? And do I leave out all the fluff in between? You want to keep all your videos down around two or three minutes when they're for somebody else. It doesn't mean I don't put up 20 minute videos and I just did a seven minute video today. I'm just not going to delude myself and think people are going to watch it. Some are, so it's there for the ones that want. But it's got to build all the way through. Every sentence is only there to get you to stick around for one more sentence. Be really careful with your long ones. But normal videos are going to be a minute or two, three on the outside. So you got to you got to make it real, authentic, hit the big key points. If it's something that requires more time, I like to do a short intro and say, if you want all the details, or if you'd like to fully understand it, click down below and I link off to the other video. And I got the long version. Anytime I have a long version, I want to have a short version. 
So there's another quick little tip for you. But the biggest ones, keep it simple, keep it authentic. Always open with a hook. Find somebody else who can edit your videos, but you do not need a video editor to do it. You need somebody with light video editing skills because all you really need to do is cut out the ums and the ahs uh, 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 or, or the part where, or because it took me four takes and I want you to stitch these two together. They got to be able to cut video, stitch video, annotate it, throw in some text, drop in some pictures or B-roll images, put in my stinger, grab my teaser out and put it at the beginning go grab a video off youtube because i'm going to use video clips start walking around and shooting your videos but the more you shoot the better you'll do the more you it just becomes natural you just get used to doing it the more you do it the better it works and it's little things there's no magic trick you just you just learn to relax after a while it becomes natural as soon as you quit being stiff as soon as you quit trying to be professional and you start really relating to people, it'll just start to work.